RStudio is the premier way to work with R code. And just like any other tool, you want to make sure that you know how to operate it effectively. This is why we've decided to show you a couple of settings that you can use in RStudio and also a couple of keyboard shortcuts that will help you with your code and help you to write code more efficiently and faster. If you want, you can think of all of this as a couple of productivity tips that we like to use in RStudio ourselves. One of the first things I want to show you is to use the pipe. You probably used it before, but one thing you should definitely not do is type it out. So to first find this one letter and then find the other one, this just takes too much time and is a little bit tedious. The best way to do that is to simply use Control Shift M and then you can throw in as many pipes as you want. And the nice thing is that our studio will also throw in the surrounding white space here. You see, if I remove this part here and move my cursor right next to the pipe and then put in Control Shift M, our studio will actually add in the white space here so that everything is formatted nicely. This is just a real quick tip to save you some time and some weird typing, especially if you're using the old pipe, the Magritta pipe, then this is even more tedious. And since pipes are so important in the tidy workflow, it makes sense to give yourself a little bit of a speed boost of not having to type out this stuff all of the time when you are working with R. And if you want to switch from the Magritta pipe to the R native pipe, you can do that via tools, global options. And in there you can go to code and then you have to use native operator here. And if I would uncheck this for this demo here, I could do the exact same thing with control shift M and it would give me the old pipe. But since I'm using the new one, let me just redo this. And while you are in the settings, you could also rearrange your layout of our studio a little bit. For example, in my case, you see that on the left, I have my source view and on the right, I have my console. Personally, I feel like these are the two most important windows in our studio because I work with them most of the time. This is why it makes sense for me to put these things next to each other instead of on top of each other where they might compete for space. And you can easily do that by using the pane layout tab. And in there you can simply select one of those. So here usually you have the console there and then you would have the environment there. But I feel like I use the console way more often. So this is why I put this in there. But of course this means that you can always get this stuff back by simply clicking on it. And as you know from my videos, whenever I generate a plot, this stuff here just pops back up. And another thing that I like to make sure of is that I have rainbow parentheses. This can be done by clicking on code, hitting the display tab in there, and then at the bottom you can uncheck, or in my case, check that we want to use the rainbow parentheses. And what I also like to add is rainbow fills. What this means is that when I have a couple of code lines, let's just throw something in here, then you can see that, first of all, my parentheses here are colored differently. This helps me to see where the matching closing parentheses for one of my opening parentheses is. And also I can see here how far my code line is indented. Personally, I think this stuff is really helpful when you work with a lot of code. So that's why we are throwing this out there. Another thing that you might have seen me do and you might have been wondering how I do this is opening a documentation page on the fly. For example, right now I've clicked on factor and it opened up the help page. Same thing could be done with string to title or with paste or whatever function else you might want to try this with. In some cases like these, I actually get asked, hey, there are multiple ones that are of the same name. Which one is the one you have? I want to look at the one from dplyr in this case. So I click on that. In any case, all of this happens with one short key, namely F1. So if I click on a function, nothing happens. But if I hit F1, then the help page comes up. And even if this stuff is toggled so that it's not visible, even if you hit F1 then, this still pops back up. Okay, so this is one of my favorite hotkeys to consult the documentation on the fly instead of opening up Chrome or Firefox or whatever and then trying to Google something. Sometimes it really helps to just look at what argument names are there in a function and then you can work your way from there. Now for our next trick, let us throw in a new code chunk. And here we can see that I've simply thrown in some weird mutate call and computed some of the stuff, it's really a nonsense calculation. I just want to highlight one thing. Namely here, I have stuff that I want to compute before I calculate all of these things. And one really easy trick to move these lines up is to simply hold the Alt key and then use your arrow keys to move things up and down. 
pretty simple and you can also go all the way you want but in this case it would only make sense to move it here don't forget to put in the comma there again this is something that can't be helped you have to do it but still this moving up and down with the arrow keys can be very fast and this is one of those tricks that i like to use every now and then now another short key that i use all the time is tap you can easily tap something to indent it all the way to where you want to have your code and one thing that is a little bit embarrassing to say maybe is that I used to do this a lot of time when I started working with R, but I had trouble to going the other way. I didn't actually know that there is a short key to unindent the stuff. So what I would do when I hit tab one too many times, I would just throw this back manually and this is very tedious. So instead what you could do is to not hit tab, but shift tab. And this way you can actually revert that operation and unindent the lines that you've previously indented. So you can easily indent as many times as you'd like, or you could go all the way back if you did this one too many times. This trick with shift actually works pretty well with other operators too. For example, if I remove this, I could hit control Z to undo what I've just done. But what if I notice that maybe this should actually really be gone, I could remove this again, or I simply hit control shift Z to redo what I've just undone. So this is also one of those tricks I use for recording all of those videos. I put in my code chunk here, then I remove all of the things that I want to show one by one, and then I just control Z everything. And if I mess up during recording and I need to redo one part, I simply use control shift Z, and that way I can start from that line again with my recording and then tell you all the other things that you need to know. So that was just a quick look behind the scenes of how we record our videos. But in any case, Control Z, Control Shift Z, or Tab and Shift Tab are really nice combinations to move your code around. And finally, let me show you one trick that I find truly fascinating. You can actually work with multiple cursors in our studio. This means that you're not restricted to one line, but you could modify multiple lines at once. For example, if I hit Alt and then drag my cursor all the way down here, I can see that I have multiple cursors here. How could this be useful? Well, I could rename all of my columns using some word new name. So that's very cool. And you may rightfully wonder, is this stuff really useful? Do I use this kind of thing all the time? Maybe not in this specific setting, but one thing where I like to use it is when I import something, say, from Excel into a vector that I want to use. For example, let's imagine that you have in a spreadsheet, you have this one column that you want to just throw into our studio. So we could, of course, copy this open up a new code chunk and then we throw this stuff in there but of course R will complain that this doesn't have these quotation marks that we usually have around words so getting quotation marks into this with one cursor is really tedious but what you now know is that if you hit alt and drag this down you can throw in the quotation marks that you want you can even add the comma that you will need at the end and then you do the same thing in the front and then you have basically all of your quotation marks all that is left to do now is to wrap this into a vector. So throw in the C start and then put the matching parentheses there. And now you have a vector with all the stuff from Excel. Really, this is just something I use for these kind of one-off scenarios where I just want to throw in one column real quickly into R using these quotation marks. Or sometimes I even only add these commas here so that R identifies the stuff that I put in there as a vector. So these were our shortcuts for our studio today. Let us know what you think about them in the comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week.